Hi, this is Thomas LaFoe from the Instructional Media Center at the Mississippi State University Libraries. And in this tutorial, we will be looking at how to create a letter-sized newsletter in Microsoft Publisher. When you open Publisher, double-click on the blank 8.5 by 11 option. This opens a blank letter-sized document with half-inch margins. For a newsletter, these margins can be set to a quarter of an inch to give more room for content. Select Page Design, Margins, and since we will also want to add column guides to this page, select Custom Margins. In the Margins tab, set the left, right, top, and bottom margins to 0.25. Click the Grid Guides tab to add columns. For a letter size newsletter, we will change this to four columns. The spacing between columns, often called the gutter, is usually set to one sixth of an inch or one pica. Type 0.167 or a sixth of an inch and click OK. Additional guides can be added to the page by clicking and dragging guides from the top or left rulers. Right-clicking on a guide will bring up the Ruler Guides dialog and allow you to check the positioning of your guides. Placing a horizontal guide at 2 inches will create space for the nameplate or the first page title of a newsletter. You can create your nameplate using the tools available in Publisher or you can import a nameplate designed in programs like Photoshop or Illustrator. To place an image in Publisher, select Insert, Pictures, and then browse for your image. You can resize your image and move it around on the page. Here I'm going to move this to the top left corner and use my corner handles to resize. The guides in the background will help you size that image and make sure it fills in the appropriate amount of space. To draw a text box, click on the Home tab and select Draw Text Box. Here we will create a text box that fills in the rest of the nameplate. After I draw my text box, I'm going to select my font. Here I'm going to choose Elephant and change my point size to 72. Type the word News. You can see that the 72 point font doesn't fill the rest of the space very well. A helpful shortcut for sizing text is to highlight the text, hold down the Control key, and use your left and right brackets next to your backspace key. If some or all of the letters disappear and red handles show up around your text box, this means that your text is too large to fit in the box you've drawn. Simply decrease the point size until it's visible. If you've clicked away from the box, click on the text so that your cursor appears inside the box and select all of the text by holding Control and pressing A. This selects not only the text that you can see, but also any text that's outside of the box. Decrease the point size until the letters are visible once again. To change the color of the text, select it by clicking and dragging to highlight, or by clicking in the box and pressing Ctrl A. Select the text box tool format tab, and here I'm going to use the Word Art Styles group to change the text fill to a light gray, and the text outline to a darker gray. Click away from the box to see the changes. I can add another text box to finish out the nameplate. Click Draw Text Box and draw a text box that covers the last three columns of the nameplate. I'm going to select Brush Script MT as my font, change the point size to 48, type in the rest of my name, and again I can use Control A to select all of the text and control and my bracket keys to adjust the point size. Text boxes in Publisher can sometimes cut off parts of fonts. This can be fixed by simply resizing and repositioning the box. If I want to match the color of this text to the maroon in my logo, I can highlight the text, go to Format under Text Box Tools, select the Text Fill, and choose Sample Fill Color. This will give me this little eyedropper tool, and I can mouse over the maroon in my logo and click. And now if I click away from the text, you can see that it matched that color. 
Now I can just reposition these boxes a little bit if I need to. If you mouse over each of these text boxes, you'll see a little faint dotted line that shows up to show you where they are. If I click on the news in the background, I can mouse up to the top, click and drag when I have my four-way arrow, and just adjust where the word news is. I could also grab current events and bring that a little bit closer to my two-inch mark. When working with articles in Publisher, create a text box for your headline and adjust the point size and wording so it fits across the columns designated for the article. Draw another text box and type or paste the story. Here I have a story pasted from the university website. Text boxes by default have no columns. To add columns, click inside the text box, choose Format under the text box tools, Columns, and choose More Columns. Here we can adjust the number of columns to what we want. Here I'm going to select two columns. And for the spacing, I want to make sure to carry over the same gutter spacing that I used to set up my document. So I'm going to choose 1 6 of an inch, which is 0.167, and press Enter or click OK. The text carried over the formatting from the previous document. So I can change the formatting by clicking in that text box, doing Control A to select all of the text, and I'm going to go to my font menu. Here I'm going to choose Times New Roman. I'm going to choose 10 points. And I'm going to click on the Home tab. Under the Home tab, I can adjust my paragraph settings. I can see here that it's got spacing in between the paragraphs. So if I click on this Call Out button, I can adjust several of these properties all at once. Here I can change the indentation for the first line to be 0.167, or a sixth of an inch. I can make sure that the before and after paragraph spacing is set to zero. And my spacing between lines, I can set to one point over my point size for the font. So I use 10 points for the font, and I'll use 11 points for the line spacing. Click OK. And now you can see that that text is adjusted more to a newsletter style. An additional setting to pay attention to in Publisher are the margins for your text boxes. These can be adjusted under the Text Box Tools Format tab, Margins, and I can choose None to ensure that I'm maximizing my space. Under the Insert tab in Publisher 2013, you'll notice a new option, which is the Picture Placeholder. If I click the Picture Placeholder, it gives me a blank frame that I can then position and adjust so I can see how this text will interact with any image. I can click on the icon in the middle to browse for an image, or if I have images in the document, I can use the icon in the middle of those images, click and drag to my placeholder, and release, and it will automatically size that picture to the new placeholder. To add a border around this picture, I can select it, choose Format under Picture Tools, and change the picture border to black. You can also adjust the weight of this border by going to Picture Border, Weight, and then choosing the weight that you'd like. Much of this article falls outside of this text box, and Publisher lets you easily jump this text to a new page. To create a new page, I'm going to right-click in the Pages pane, select Insert Page, I can choose the number of pages, where to insert the pages, and whether or not the pages should be blank or duplicate any objects. I'm going to click OK, and click back to page 1. When you select a text box that has overflowing text, you'll notice the little ellipses mark over on the right-hand side of the text box. If I click this button, you'll notice that I get a little picture that is filled with the letters. If I click now to page 2, and click on this page, I get a new text box that contains the rest of that story. This text box can be resized, and I can also change the number of columns using the same methods as we did before. Here by adjusting these settings, I can create the rest of this story on page two. Adjust the size to where it fills the rest of the columns, and I can zoom out using my zoom slider at the bottom right, and position this story on the page. Publisher also has the option to include jump text in your linked text boxes. Here I can select the text box, go to the call out button next to text, 
This opens the Format Text Box dialog. I can click Continued From Page, click OK, and it adds that jump text at the top of the article. Now I can move back to page one, click in the first text box, and you can also get to this menu by right-clicking and going to Format Text Box. Here I can choose the Text Box tab, choose Continued On Page, and click OK. This then adds the jump text to the bottom of this first text box. If you have more than one story on a page, you may want to add a dividing line. This can be done by choosing Shapes from your Home tab, choosing the Line tool, and when holding Shift, you can draw a straight line from margin to margin. Using these various tools and techniques, you can create a very professional newsletter using Microsoft Publisher. If you have any questions or for more tutorials and handouts, visit our website at library.msstate.edu/imc. Thanks for watching.